top of the morning, it's another fine sunrise. But I can't go skipping on down the lane with you. I got a serious problem with this wind turbine. If I don't fix it before this winter storm coming, the whole thing could come crashing to the ground. Now this turbine's been installed and running here just fine for nine years, producing good power, especially in the winter when the storm winds blow. Charges up my off-grid house batteries real nice. The issue is with these tower support cables, and you can see they're pretty rusty. Well, they got rusty the second year after I installed them. They're galvanized or zinc-coated steel, but apparently I got the electroplated zinc coating instead of the hot dip type. The electroplating just won't hold up for very long in an outside environment like this. Now you tell me. And I'm not going to be deceived by thinking, well, it's a pretty big cable, so what's a little rust? Well, actually, if you look at a cross-section of this cable, it's made up of over a hundred little strands. And when you think of each little strand getting rusty, it wouldn't take much for it to get through it and make it dangerously weak. So understanding this about the cable and thinking about seven years of rusting, I feel I'm just lucky these old cables haven't broken yet. And that would happen likely in the middle of a windy storm. Note the rusty stain on the concrete. That's from the rain coming down the cable, picking up the rust and depositing it. Here's those cables after I removed them and piled them up. There's a total of eight four lower and four upper and here's the upper set of four new ones ready to go these are the old cable thimbles that go on each end of each cable and they were galvanized and they're rusty so i'm going to use stainless steel this time stainless steel oh yeah Another change I'm going to make is I'm going to add these turnbuckles to all the cables and they make an easy way to adjust the tightness of the cable. Cables tend to stretch over time and without turnbuckles it's really difficult to make fine adjustments in the cable tension. Here's the wind turbine with its rusty old loose cables and it's a Berge XL1 early model. And its specs say the maximum thrust at 120 miles an hour is 200 pounds. So that tells me my cable has to be at least that strong. I double it just for a reserve. But then when you pull on it on an off angle, like going down, I would double it again. So we're up to about 800 pounds. And that's what I had. My 3 16 cable was rated for 800 pounds working load. So, out with the old, in with the new. Here's what I've gathered together to replace the old cable setup. The main difference is I've decided to have the upper cables be a bigger size than the lower cables because they take a lot more of the force. So there's two sizes of everything. These are the turnbuckles I mentioned and you can see here's what it looks like when it's turned all the way in and when it's turned all the way out. It's the same one. And then there's the other parts, the thimbles, cable clips, and the two spools of cables. Now I've decided to spring for stainless cables this time. They cost about twice as much. And this is the smaller cable, quarter inch, which is slightly larger than the old 3 16 An important thing to watch is you see that 6,400 pound, that's the braking strength, not the working load. The working load is divided by five, which would be 1,280 pounds. The handwritten 150 is the length of the cable on the spool. Now that quarter inch would have been fine for the whole thing, but I decided to go overkill on the upper cables and I went up to the next size, which is 5 16 Again, it's showing the braking strength, 9,000 pounds, so that would mean the working load is 1800 pounds. Serious overkill and not really necessary. 
Now the last number of interest there, the 7x19 on both cables, that's the grouping of the cable. There's seven bundles with 19 strands in each. Now there are other configurations, and I'm no expert, but this one's pretty common. More smaller strands makes the cable more stretchy and flexible. Now this is a tilt tower and I'm going to tilt it down to do the cable change but I don't trust those rusty old cables to winch it down with so I'm going up there to hook on a winch cable directly to the tower. Oh yeah, I was climbing Mount Everest. I'm not going to go into the details of how to raise and lower a tilt tower here. That would be a whole video in itself. There's likely some good ones posted on YouTube. Here's the setup to measure out and cut the new cables to match the old cables. Here, both cable ends are lightly clamped down on that to hold them. And then I run them down here until the old one stops. And they've all been marked because each one is different length. There's the end. And then this is the supply of the new cable on the spool. Now because I'm using a turnbuckle, I have to subtract the length of it from the cut on the new cable. So that's the end of the old one. And I'll mark the cut on the new one. Note that the turnbuckle length is adjusted halfway out. So that's the cut mark and I'm just going to add a few inches on for the heck of it. Too short is a real bummer. Too long is no problem. The reason I wrap this tape around there is to keep the ends from fraying too badly when I cut it this way. I don't have any other kind of cutter. And last but not least, it's important to put a mark on here that shows which tower cable this is going to be. And I just coil it up and get it ready to bring back to the tower. Time for reassembly. A note about these thimbles. When I bought them online, they came a little bit smaller than the galvanized ones, when they should actually be a little bigger because the stainless cable's ornery and hard to wrap around them. So I bought the next bigger size. The next step is to load on these cable clips or cable clamps. and. There's one thing to watch out for here is to have this one all the way up as far as it can go next to the thimble. And the other thing is to have the U-bolt side of these clips on the short cut end of the cable. Always make sure and double check it. So now to actually install the cable, loop it through the thimble. That's that ornery stainless, hard to bend. And then I slide the first clamp up about an inch from the end. Start tightening it down. And I want to go back and forth and tighten both sides down gradually. Don't just do one real tight. And I'm just lightly tightening these down with the cordless drill. I'll come back later with a hand ratchet to finalize the tightness. And the tightening torque value isn't that much anyway. It's only 15 foot-pounds for this quarter-inch cable. Then I install a second clamp and slide it on up to the thimble. And don't worry about getting it tucked in all the way yet. But as soon as the clip is a little bit tight, then snug it up against the thimble and then tighten it the rest of the way. Then I install the third clip between the two other ones and same procedure. And once again, I want to emphasize that the main important thing is that this clamp is up against the thimble and that all three clamps, U-bolts, are on the short cut end of the cable. As for installing the other end of the cables, I'm going to use turnbuckles this time, but they're a little too cramped together there on that eye ring, so I'm going to add these chain quick links 
to get the turnbuckles away from each other a little bit. The lower cable doesn't need as much strength, so I'm going down to a smaller quick link and a smaller turnbuckle. The smaller quick link is 3 8 and it's rated for 2200 pounds working load, as is the smaller turnbuckle. The upper cable will use the bigger quick link and a bigger turnbuckle which are both rated for 3,200 pound working load. Now it's time to install the cables to the turnbuckles. And I'll show one here. First thing to do is to remove that nut and bolt on the turnbuckle and install a thimble. Then I'm going to want to crank this turnbuckle to extend it all the way out because these two side cables, they tend to get looser and looser as the tower is raised back up. And now the turnbuckle will let me take in all that slack. But anyway, this cable installation goes on just as before. Now I'm coming back to all the clips on the cables and tightening them down a little more consistently being sure to alternate from side to side to bring them both down evenly. I'll come back and visit them one more time again with the torque wrench. The quarter inch are 15 foot pounds and the 5 sixteenths are 30 foot pounds. So erecting a tower of this size is serious business, deadly serious. And there's specifications for all this that's more specific than what I'm bringing up here. In the description down below, click the show more and you'll see a link there to where I got my information about these cables and clips. There's the space between them, how tight to tighten them, how long the end of the cable should be looped around the thimble, how many clips to use, and all the particulars. In fact, I wouldn't even attempt a project like this until I had all the correct information. Even seeking out the advice of a professional installer if I wasn't sure about something. So back to the project. Now that I've got this all set up, I'm going to take some of the slack up on this cable because I'm ready to raise the tower. But before I can put this project to bed and call it done, there's a few more things that need to be done. One of them is this jaw end of the turnbuckle and that nut and bolt that go through there. Here's another final thing to check. These three quick links. I haven't really torqued these down either. Remember, it's better to have the cables too long than too short. If they were too long, I'll end up with a big long piece dangling down there that's going to poke me in the back when I'm working or something. So I put a fourth clamp on that one there to keep it tucked in. And once the tower's up, it takes a bit of time and patience to get the tower level plumb, working the cables links back and forth and adjusting things but in the end hopefully it ends up straight and tall and looking good now I had a problem with three of these four lower turnbuckles the left hand threaded side is way too loose and I think that would make its working load be a lot less. So, yeah, check it out. 
So I'm going to try and tighten up the space between these threads and that means making the female side smaller. I only need to go about 15 thousandths. But I'm going to heat this up with a torch. Yeah, don't breathe those fumes. I'm upwind of it. You can see the smoke going away from me. Now I'm only going to do a little bit here because if I collapse this hole too far the screw won't go back in and I'll be in a nightmare because the left hand threaded tap is going to be hard to find to make the hole big again. So I'm just going to heat up one fourth of it at a time, one quadrant and pound on one quadrant at a time so I don't squish the hole into an oval. And it looks like kind of wimpy little taps but I only want to go a little bit, I don't want to go too far. I can always do it again if it wasn't enough. I had a little talk with the seller of these and he was just quoting me all these specifications but I was saying well yeah but what about the quality control? Things get out of spec when they're being made in the factory somebody's supposed to be watching. I bought six of them thinking I could get four good ones out of it but no dice. This type of turnbuckle is normally a bit looser than regular nuts and bolts, but these were way beyond. Or he just wanted to play blacksmith with his tools. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's see how he did. At least it's not too tight. Darn near perfect. I need to replace the galvanizing that burnt off so it won't rust. So I'm going to clean it up with a wire brush and use some of this stuff. It works really good. It's just powdered zinc and some kind of varnish. And it puddles real easy and comes out real strong. So I want to get some down in on those threads, but not enough to puddle. Hey, now his fingers won't rust either. And I let it dry and did another coat and then let it dry for 24 hours before I screwed the pieces back together. It's another fine mess you've got us into this time, Ollie.